the only player to be a National Player of the Year as a true freshman and one of the most efficient perimeter scorers in D1 history. Paige Beckers is an all-time great guard prospect. With this college scouting series, I want to start by running through a player's stat profile, then we'll get into their strengths and improvement areas, and finally finish off with my preseason scouting grade on them as prospects. Paige Beckers, 5'11 point guard out of UConn, she'll be 23 and a half ish on draft day in 2025. With Paige and what makes her special as a prospect, start with her size. I have her listed as a point guard, but she's almost never UConn's smallest player on the court. Sometimes last season she was playing the four for them. She's played the three, the two, the one. Such a versatile player. And that takes us to our stat profile on Paige. Last season, in her senior season, technically, with the red shirt she now has, 21.9 points, 5.2 rebounds, 3.8 assists, to only 1.5 turnovers, also averaged 2.2 steals, 1.4 blocks on 59% from two, 42% from three, and 83% from the line, was pretty much the most efficient scorer in college basketball last season, and that takes us to her strengths, which are her pick-and-roll creation ability, her processing speed and feel for the game, also her off-ball movement shooting and cutting, and then her defensive playmaking. To start with her pick-and-roll creation, for me, pick-and-roll creation is the most valuable skill for a guard prospect, and Paige is excellent in this area. Her ability to decelerate into mid-range jumpers on a dime is next level, and for me, I feel confident saying she is the greatest mid-range creation prospect in WNBA history. And if you don't think she is the greatest, she's at least in the top class with players like Tamika Ketchings, Simone Augustus, also would probably say Maya Moore is in that tier as well. And something that she she shares with Maya in, in terms of her mid-range creation ability is how they can adjust their body in the air from pretty much many different angles. And this is not just her ability as a mid-range scorer because it goes beyond that. It's her elevation how she can hold her body in the air, her body control, and for some numbers on how she performed out of mid-range jumpers last season, 46.8%, very good mark, on 3.6 attempts per game, much more of a volume mid-range scorer compared to a volume three-point shooter, off the dribble at least, and what makes Paige so tough to guard is you know she can score in the mid-range, you know she can make shots from three as well. It's how do you balance that with being aggressive as far as like defenses? Like how, how, if you're a defender on page, what are you looking for? She can beat you in so many different ways off the dribble. And she is exceptional at changing speeds as a driver, especially at a pick and roll and how she takes precise angles as a driver. That is such a valuable skill because of just her overall ability to view the game, how she sees the game is what separates Paige from a lot of other prospects at her age. Like, you could make a case that she is not only one of the best mid-range scoring prospects ever, but she's also, like, one of the best finishing guard-slash-wing prospects ever. And the insane part about that is, she was coming off a 20 ACL last season and improved her ability to draw fouls, and not only her ability to draw fouls, but also finish through contact at the rim. And in the half court, as far as her rim finishing... 73.2%, just not many guard slash wings better than that on 2.5 attempts per game. So like we've said, the ability to finish, but also score in the mid-range as a creator. And that comes as well with her ability as a passer as well. She is an exceptional processor of the game. Paige uses her scoring gravity, but also her driving gravity to draw defenders and also manipulate them with her eyes using head fakes, ball fakes, but also just looking one way and then throwing the ball the other way. It's an exceptional ability with her. Like last season, she had a 23.7% assist rate to only an 8.2% turnover rate. An insane mark, she never turns over the basketball, and she was one of five Division I players to post a 20% assist rate and less than a 10% turnover rate. It's, an, it's exceptional when you consider the offensive load she had as a scorer, not turning over the ball, making good decisions, and then being able to blend her ability as an on-ball scorer with also her ability as an off-ball cutter, off-ball shooter. And this comes in many different ways. She can make shots stationary, but also off-movement, coming off flare screens, pin-down screens, 
whatever. She's extremely versatile with how she can really adapt her jumper to many different situations. And as far as what she can do as a cutter, with UConn playing in a Princeton system, a lot of her cuts or a lot of different UConn cuts for different players are scheme-based. You saw that with Lula Senechal a couple years ago. A lot of her cuts were just within the offense and their scheme. But for Paige, it's, there's obviously some of that as well, where Gino is just scheming up cuts for Paige because she's so good at it, such a good finisher. But also, she has an unreal understanding of just open space and finding these open seams within the defense to just take advantage of those plays. Because a lot of times, you're ball watching, and Paige takes advantage of that. And then to close out the strength portion of this, it's her defensive playmaking. If I made this video a year ago, her defense in general would probably be an improvement area slash concern because her defense through her first couple college seasons were super hit or miss. It was inconsistent. She had moments, obviously, just because of the athleticism and how she sees the game. But last season, she took a massive leap. Wasn't quite like the best perimeter defender in college basketball, but she was one of the best among like high volume offensive players, and that's what's most impressive about Paige. It's so rare to see a high usage perimeter scorer play as hard as she does on defense as well, like dive for loose balls, play passing lanes, fly across the court for a block. For me, I've watched a lot of historical prospects, and there's only a handful of prospects who were high usage perimeter scorers for elite like title contenders who also played as hard as Paige does on defense, like diving for loose balls, playing passing lanes, flying across the court for a block, coming down to help from the nail. All of this stuff, Paige does at an exceptional level. And that list for me would probably include like Tamika Catchings, Maya Moore. And besides that, it's so hard to find anybody else. It's like just kind of Paige Beckers. I don't know. She's just that level of defender. And... For me, I'm talking up her defense, but I don't think it's quite like Tamika Catchings, defensive stopper, you put her on the best wing, and you know, she's winning defensive player of the years three, four times in her career, or even more. That's just not how I see Paige's defense. She's much better off the ball, being able to be this roaming helper, make plays as just like a free safety on defense, but also... I'm not saying she's bad on ball as a point of attack defender navigating screens on ball. She's good at that, but I would say like if you're talking about her ability as a defender, she's like an A, A-plus help defender, but also like a B, B-plus-ish, maybe A-minus on ball defender. That combination there I don't think gives her like defensive player of the year value, but for me, aside of like what's her offensive role in the W, how much usage does she have, that could change the def defensive level there because we're seeing with like Kalia Copper in Phoenix her defensive value has went down as her offensive usage has went up like still a good defender can make plays on defense but just as like a median outcome for Paige defensively I would project her to be an all defensive caliber player does she make it multiple times I don't know but like defensive caliber because of just the playmaking defensively but also what is not on the stat sheet as well as far as like just contesting jumpers and making good reads. She doesn't really foul. For instance, there was 10 players in Division I women's basketball last season to post a 3% steal rate and at least a 4% block rate. Among these players, Paige had by far the lowest foul rate at 2.6%. So being able to make plays on defense and not foul while also doing what she does offensively, it's absurd. It's it's mind-boggling to me. As we go through this scouting series on prospects across the country in the 2025 draft, nobody's going to have as few of weaknesses as Paige has. For me, her weaknesses or improvement areas slash questions are her off-dribble three-point shooting slash volume. And the other question is like, does her defensive trajectory continue? Because like I said, in the past, she hasn't been this level of a defender. And then also, it's injuries. She's missed a lot of games. To start with her pull-up shooting, this is the main difference between Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers as prospects. Not saying Caitlin's a better prospect. They're very close, like really like similar prospects to me. But the separator there is Caitlin is much more of a deep pull-up shooting She's crossing half court in transition. She's pulling up. Last season, 
Page took only four transition threes compared to Caitlin's 86. This is among, among like pull-up threes in transition off the dribble. Also, overall, on any pull-up jumper from three, Page only averaged 0.9 attempts per game and shot 25.7%. So it's just not her game in comparison to her mid-range pull-up shooting. The volume is nowhere in the same vicinity. For me, if you've watched any video on this channel, I value pull-up three-point shooting more than pull-up two-point shooting. But whenever you're as good of a pull-up shooter as Paige, it doesn't really matter there. And I'm not like, oh, it's a major concern. But like, it is still a weakness. If Paige can make pull-up threes and is just this caliber of a pull-up shooter, not even saying she's a 40% pull-up shooter, she's taking three to four attempts per game on pull-up jumpers from three, if she's taking like 1.5 to 2 and shooting like 33 to 35% next season, that takes her to another level. And I don't know what that level is because her prospect already is one of the best of all time. So we'll talk about that if it happens. And she's just shown consistent year over year growth with her game offensively and defensively. So you can't really count it out. I'm not banking on it happening because she just hasn't done it in college, but it's possible it could happen. Like I said, she got beat back door a lot more than she did in 2023, 2024. But last season, she was so locked in off the ball. Her reads, her instincts, she was just so engaged. So I'm not too concerned as far as her defense, but it's still a question. You want to see multiple seasons of high-level defensive play to feel like 100% confident. I'm like 95% confident right now. And then her last concern it's just injuries this is like the main concern for me if she doesn't make pull up threes sure I mean it's it's a small thing with most prospects I wouldn't even include it as a weakness because I just think the standards are so much higher for Paige and if you don't if I just find any weaknesses that's one of them but the main one for me like I said is injuries if there's anything that can really impact what her career trajectory looks like to this point it's injuries the torn ACL and just missing games randomly. For a stat here, she has missed 57 games in her UConn career. That is 40% of their total games. That's a lot. It is a lot. So, like, for me, I really hope we can get a full, healthy season from Paige again. So, like, two years in a row of healthy play would make me feel even more confident about her long-term injury concerns there. But, like, there's players, like I would say Satu Tabli's one, for example, where Satu or even Candace Parker as well, they just miss a lot of games, or they missed a lot of games like for Candace's whenever she was in the W. But whenever she was on the court in the limited amount of games, there were some seasons where she played like 16 games and still be like the most impactful player in those 16 games. That's what I could see for Paige as like a worst case scenario. That doesn't really take her from me like a down a tier as a prospect because like, Candace is my favorite player of all time, my best player of all time, in terms of like actual value when she was on the court. So for Paige, it's just injuries. If she can get two healthy seasons in a row, that'll be extremely huge for her entering the W. And then, like I said, to recap this preseason scouting report and to give an idea of where I would rank Paige in the class, what's her overall scouting grade, Paige is obviously number one in the class for me pretty easily by a pretty substantial margin. Kiki Riaf, and someone we'll talk about later, is an awesome prospect, but not quite in the same tier as Paige. And that tier for me is an 80 grade median outcome. Perennial MVP candidate is like my median projection for her. If things like go as I would expect it to happen without banking in like outlier development, like, outlier development for me would be saying if Paige is a legit pull-up three-point shooter, she's an 80-plus grade prospect. 80-plus grade prospects for me, like, a couple 80-plus would basically be, like, inner circle Hall of Fame. 80 is still, like, perennial MVP candidate. Like, 80-plus would be, for sure, like, Candace Parker, Lauren Jackson, or a couple prospects off the top of my head. But just a comparison to my scouting grade on other guard prospects in the last couple years that I use this system. Caitlin Clark, 80 grade, same as Paige Beckers. Leila Khan out of France, also a prospect in 2024, 
who went, I believe, number 10 overall to Connecticut, which was just because of prioritization rules and not being a college prospect. 55 grade, and then for J.C. Sheldon, I have a 50 grade, also had a 50 grade on Veronica Burton. So we're talking about one of the best guard prospects of all time, the best ones for me, like in terms of like pure on-ball guards, it would be in no order, Paige, Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, Caitlin Clark. Those are like the four I can think of. You could also throw like Chelsea Gray in there, Courtney Vandersloot, but the way Paige can make plays on both ends of the court, the versatility, and the way she can adapt her game into many roles where she can play an off-ball role, she can play an on-ball role. I just think her game is so suited for the W and just being one of the best players we've ever seen. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. What are you most excited about for Paige's 2024-2025 college season at UConn? And if you have any suggestions for future prospects for me to cover in this series, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for WNBA content, and I'll see y'all next time.